Hey, what's up my Radical Squad? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Del Marche Walker and I hope everyone is having a great day today. I have watched another YouTube channel called Earn Your Leisure and I think this particular show was them um, recorded back in July, on July 4th of this year. And on this particular show, they had 85 South, which is um, Carlos Miller, DC Youngfly, and Chico Bean. And they were just kind of, it was like an hour long show and they kind of talked to them about um, different things, their new Netflix special and different things like that. And it's a couple questions that came up that I wanted to kind of answer. I was going to do it in there, you know, under the, the video in the comment, but I decided to make a video. I felt that it would be easier for me to do so. One of the things they touched on was um, chat GPT. I've watched y'all plenty of times and it's straight off the top of the head. Right. It's impromptu. It's genius, right? But now we're talking about producing shows, making independent movies. Do we now begin writing or do we get, right. a, we get, a, we get a, te a team around to write like a script? Like, how does that work for you? Chat GPT. That's it right That's there. We're just going to get Chat GPT to write the script. We turn it in. And so as you can see, the question they asked was, you know, if they got to the point where they're going to do movies, would they, you know, would they, I think it was um, Carlos Bean who said they would use chat GPT. You know, it probably was a joke because they are comedians. But I just wanted to kind of touch on that because I know a lot of people do use chat GPT. Um, I have done other videos kind of speaking on how I feel about AIs and how I feel that they're taking over. But especially when it comes to like musician, artist, um, comedian, people who kind of really depend on their mind to come up or stay fresh and different things like that. Because with the uh, being an improv comedian, one of your things is being able to come up, you know, with jokes, stories or whatever off the top of your head, as well as being able to feed off the people that's around you when you're telling jokes. And I think it's the same way when it comes to music. You know, I think music comes from your soul, comes from your, within your experience, or writing a book, writing a story comes from your experience, your knowledge, your wisdom on life. And I feel like the soul of that comes from you and cannot come from a artificial intelligence, even though it may speak in your language, but it can't speak in your soul. And so I feel like if a person started using that, I think it, in a way it would become a crutch. So like, just say you're in a, in, in a bind or in a pinch and you say, well, okay, I'm gonna use this to write this story or write this or write that. I feel that eventually you're gonna become lazy. You're gonna start, you know, like they say, if you don't use it, you lose it. Then you're gonna start losing your ability to be on point, to come up with things off the top of your brain because you're depending on chat GPT. And then the other side to that is what happens when you're using chat GPT to come up with all these great ideas and for whatever reason, it's no longer available to you and now you have to come up with something on your own. And then your fans, your critics or whoever they may be, not knowing that you use chat GP, GPT say, oh, I like that, that better. Everything that chat GPT GPT did up until that point, they're like, oh, I like that, I like this, I like that, what happened? Now you're doing it off your own, you know, mind. They're like, oh, what happened? I like when you did this over here. Um, you're kind of falling off, this is not good. So how is that with your ego? How do that make you feel as a person that you're no longer, you know, like you was up here before you started using chat GPT, you kind of stayed the same or went up higher now you're back on your own and you in in their eyes you drop down you're not as great as you used to be because you're you started depending on a system instead of yourself it's a tool and with any tool you know it, it all depends on how you use it whether it becomes good or bad so that's the one thing i wanted to talk about and then another um situation they brought up 
I was sure that. If it was a room, like if they say behind that door, are all the real answers to any questions you can ever have in your life, the real unquestionable answers, you're going to know exactly what the truth is about anything behind this door. Would you go in? I'm going. I don't want it. I want to know. I don't want to know. Yeah, got to do it. It's I'm going to never be happy You'll again. You'll never be the same again. No, and so you can see with the second conversation, it was if you can go into this room and ask any question and the honest, very honest answer will be given to you, would you want to know? And like with DC Youngfly, he was like, no, he wouldn't want to know. And I feel the same way. Knowing everything, especially when you can't do anything about it, because that was the other part. You can't do anything about it. You're just knowing. And knowing this information, I don't, you know, I, I feel that a lot of people be thinking, well, it'd be great to have all this knowledge, to know all this information. But when you know all that information and you can't do anything about it, it becomes a burden. And then you also, the other part to, to that, the way I look at it is this way. Um, there's a theory about six degrees of separation that everybody in the world kind of knows each other, but they're separated by between five or six people or maybe a little more, you know, so it's like I work with this person who worked with that person who know that person who know that person who knows that person. So it's one of those type of things. So just say you go in there, you're over here asking a question about a certain situation that happen just say in order for them to tell you why that person did that or what happened in that situation they got to tell the whole story what if you find out that somebody you like somebody you admire somebody you hold in high esteem was part of that because you know they're saying well the reason this person did you know the reason this person broke into that person's house is because they talked to this person who talked to this person who did this, who did that. And then one of the people you know and admire is in that storyline. Now, how would you feel about that person? Well, just say if somebody you know ordered someone else to do something sinister. You know, like they walk around like they're innocent, like they do nothing, do no wrong. You know, they, the, the, um, in their community, they held at a very high esteem. You know, people see them a certain way. But then on the back end, behind closed doors, they're a very sinister and evil person. And you're in that room asking a question, not about that person, but when the story is being told, that person then ends up in that storyline. So how would you feel, you know, if it was you, you found out something about your mother, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your husband, your wife, that wasn't in the original question, but in order to get the answer, they had to go, you know, down the line. You're finding out these things about these people, but you can't do anything about it. So now you're walking around with all this information. You're you're no longer feeling a certain, you know, it's like, oh my God, I never believe this person would be like this. Oh, I never believe this person would do this. I can't believe that person did that. Because anytime, it's almost like going to, um, like in the Bible, we're told not to go to fortune tellers and people like that because you're 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 not going to get the true information you know is, is something bad behind that and so that's how i feel about going in, in that door asking these questions getting knowledge that you're you shouldn't be privileged to because even in the bible it doesn't answer all your questions and um, like dc young fly was saying God said, this is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Do not eat from the, the do not eat from that tree. And is the first thing when they ate from that tree, like when Eve ate it and then she gave it to Adam, the first thing that happened, their eyes was open and they felt ashamed because they realized they was naked. So you're walking around with all this information, all this knowledge, you're feeling shame for other people. You're feeling shame, you know, you know something is happening bad to someone, but what can you do to really help them? Because you can't do anything about it. So you got all this information, all this pressure, you know, and like I said, I don't feel that it makes you a better person knowing all this. It just make you a burden person because now you got all this information that you can't do anything about. And then the um, third question, I'll play that for you. 
script. First thing I'm asking. What's the first thing you asking? Yeah. Why do niggas have it so hard? Who set it up like this? I'm going to answer the question this way. In the Bible, you see that God is having a conversation with Abraham. And he's telling Abraham that he's going to give him many descendants, as many stars as in the sky, as many you know, grains of sand on the earth. He's going to have those descendants. And so the first child that he had wasn't the promised child. So it was the child that came from his wife, Sarah, which was um, Isaac. So with Isaac, Isaac had two sons. There was twin boys, Esau and Jacob. And so with Esau and Jacob, you know the story, Esau, I'm sorry, Jacob stole Esau birthright and all this and got his blessing. Esau was upset and was going to kill him. So Jacob's um, mother told him to go where her brother was and stay with him until Esau calmed down. So Jacob left. He went. First wife was Leah. And then he ended up marrying her sister, which, which was Rachel, who he truly loved. So And then he had two other women. So it was a total of four mothers, one father, which was Jacob. He ended up having a total of 12 sons and um, his 12 sons and one daughter. So the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 tribes are named from his sons or his grandsons. So that's how you get the 12 tribes. These are the sons of um, Jacob. And so one of the tribe, well, one of the sons name was Judah. So Judah represent one of the tribes of the 12 tribes. And so when you read Deuteronomy 28, it talks about blessings and it talks about curses. And so if you look at the curses in Deuteronomy 28, it talks about them not um, obeying God, basically doing what they want to do. And these are the curses that's going to fall on you. I'm not going to go through all that because it's a lot of information. It's better that you just read it for yourself. But, you know, it's saying that you're not going to be, you're not going to remember who you are. You're going to be um, spread out throughout the world. The people are going to hate you. They're not, you know, they're not going to have compassion from you, for you. No matter how hard you work, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to prosper. You're not going to enjoy the fruits of your labor. And so that's how we are as black people. We have been spread around the world. And no matter where we go, we're treated like crap. And so when you read Deuteronomy 28, you would see that's part of the curse of not being faithful to God, of not listening to God. And so don't just like, you know, like I said, read both the blessings and the curse. So I feel that we should repent from our sins and turn back to God. And by turning back to God, then we will be able to live under the blessing and no longer live under the curse. And also when you read the Bible, you will see God saying that, you know, eventually he's going to call his people back. And so we're at the stage where we kind of like waking up, realizing who we truly are. And we're going to get to the point where we're going to live under the blessing and not the curse. But you still have to repent from your sin and turn away from your sin and turn back to God, turn back to Yahweh. So that's all I wanted to say. Peace.